We are now officially in the month of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. It's June 1st, and it comes out on June 21st, and I have tons of things that I want to talk about. First, I'll be going over my final hopes and wishes for the game, what I predict will be shown off at E3 this year, and then I'll talk about predictions I have for Nintendo and Microsoft, because my predictions for those are small enough to fit in this video. Now, when it comes to my hopes and wishes for the game, Beanox has actually met quite a lot of them before I even had the chance to make this video. The whole customization feature, making the Nitro Kart bosses playable, and the new unlock method for the boss characters, like having them unlocked as soon as you beat them in the adventure mode, instead of having to go through the gem cups. This is something I was really hoping for, because originally you start out with 8 racers, and going through that whole process would be tedious to new players, because people's attention spans these days aren't what they used to be, so they'd drop the game if it took them a while to unlock anyone. So unlocking them after each boss race instead of after the gem cups is a really good change. I've seen some people unhappy about the new unlock method for boss characters because it's not faithful to the original, but you gotta remember guys, they may be making this game for us, but they're also making it for everyone, new players included. They have to make it so new players will be interested and so new players will stick around. Overall, I think it's a nice touch. One thing I really hope for is that, with the alternate skins, I hope the icon for that skin will be shown on the sidebar during a race. You know what I'm talking about, with the top four placed racers constantly rotating as they change placements. Hopefully in the final version, they'll use the icon of the skin you selected, so that way, if you have lots of people playing the same character, you won't be confused. It'll be especially useful if they bring in Nitro Kart's team race mode, so that way you won't get your teammates confused with anyone. Next up, I already know there's going to be leaderboards online, but I want them to take the extra step and allow you to download other players' ghosts, so you can see how they complete each race. Or even just watch the replays of the time trials. That way, it would help players who are trying to keep up, keep up. Speaking of online though, we should get a ranking and point system. That way, the players who have the reserve system down and know all the shortcuts will all be clumped together, while the newcomers can all chill with each other, so that way it won't be too easy for the pros and it won't be too hard for the newbies. Then finally, we come to characters. On the subject of characters, I'd really like to see Pasadena and Von Clutch. I mean, I'm personally satisfied with the roster as it is, but it couldn't hurt to have a little more. Pasadena and Von Clutch are just hopes, though. For E3, I'm actually predicting we'll get to see plenty of other characters. Like the Naughty Dog characters people have been waiting for for a long time. And they are coming, don't worry. Not only are they using assets and models from the Insane Trilogy as they can directly port them to this game, but they have also hinted at them quite a few times already, by having Brio's face on banners in the Cortex Castle stage, or even winking in reply to someone requesting Tana. Speaking of the Cortex Castle stage, Nina was also on a banner, so I'm expecting her as well. I know she's not a Naughty Dog character, but like Crunch, she is just another big character in the franchise. Other Naughty Dog reps like Komodo, Mo, Koala Kong, or even Baby T, I'm not really sure of. But considering all the fan service they've shown so far, I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up in. Tana and Brio just seem like the more sure things right now. I am definitely expecting Spyro though. They've hinted at it plenty of times, he was playable in the Game Boy Advanced version of Crash Nitro Kart, and it just seems like the kind of big thing you'd show off at E3. Kinda like how the Insane Trilogy's biggest reveal was Coco being playable, and they showed that at E3. Think about all they've revealed for Crash Team Racing Nitro Field so far. They've shown all the CTR characters, all the Nitro Kart characters, they've shown off the story mode, and just recently they revealed the Retro Track. They've shown off so much in terms of gameplay and different game modes, so now is the time for them to stockpile on characters. Revealing the Naughty Dog cast, any other highly requested Crash characters, and of course topping it off with a Spyro guest character. And for those doubting they're even gonna show anything at E3, they are. They confirmed it in a livestream. And speaking of guest characters when it comes to E3 in general, I'm super excited for Nintendo's conference to see who the next DLC character is in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And of course, I'm really hoping it's Crash Bandicoot. Because Crash Team Racing Nitro Field is also coming the same month, and it would make perfect sense. Sakurai is trying to appeal more to the Western audience this time around, and Crash is popular here and worldwide. And Sakurai is a sucker for those comeback stories, as seen by Mega Man. I'm not really sure what to think about the rest of Nintendo's conference, though. Don't worry, I'm not one of those Nintendo fans that only cares about Smash, but like, Metroid Prime 4 pretty much got restarted, so it's nowhere near complete enough to show anything off, and we've still seen nothing for Bayonetta 3 yet, so hoping for a big reveal, maybe? And I'm personally not too interested in Pokemon or Fire Emblem, and considering that's all they really have left, there's not much for me in Nintendo's conference. I'll be relying on whatever new things they show. Now, Sony isn't doing a conference this year, but I still have fingers crossed for a state of play. 
possibly something separate from E3 entirely, but still around the same time. Basically what Nintendo has done for E3 the past several years. Hopefully we get to see more of Medieval, hopefully we get an Ape Escape reveal because it's their 20th anniversary. I'm super pumped, I really hope we get something. And people are still hoping to see more of The Last of Us 2 and Death Stranding. Sony still has a lot coming, and I'm sure there's plenty they could reveal if they still had a conference. When it comes to Microsoft, though, I'm actually pretty excited for them this year. They did extremely well last year. Maybe because a lot of the games they showed that I was interested in were also coming out on PlayStation 4, but yeah, still very good. As far as exclusives, though, I mean, they could have a new Banjo & Conquer game from Rare, but they tease that every year and nothing ever comes from it. Maybe this will be the year to change that? Who knows? I think my favorite conference this year is going to be the Square Enix conference, surprisingly enough. They're gonna drop more information and gameplay of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which looks to no longer be turn-based, so I'm actually interested in it now. And it looks like they may show off more Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC. Plus, they're going to reveal the Avengers Project, and whatever else they have planned going on in the background. Overall, it looks like Square Enix has a ton of stuff, and I'm super pumped to see that. Ubisoft usually doesn't have much I'm interested in besides Rayman. Hopefully we get something new with Rayman, but they've also been good friends with Nintendo lately, so it'd be interesting to see what else they're collaborating with Nintendo on at the moment. And then, finally, I can't wait to laugh at Bethesda's conference and fall asleep at EA's. Hopefully Bethesda apologizes and makes it up to everyone for that whole Fallout 76 ordeal. But that's pretty much all my hopes and desires and predictions for E3. I'm super excited for this year, mainly for the Crash Team Racing Nitro Field stuff, but I can't wait to see what everyone else has to offer. Leopold the Brave, out.